Backpack Row, and this is my good friend Micah Cadwell, and this is the first episode of Talking Guitar Podcast, and we're just going to kind of talk about guitar, uh, jazz guitar, rock guitar, whatever kind of guitar stuff we, we come across in music in general. So thanks for joining us. So we just played Take the A-Train, uh, Duke Ellington tune, Billy Strayhorn, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> the first topic we want to kind of talk about is the importance of actually knowing standards rather than reading them and actually internalizing them. What are your thoughts on learning tunes and... The, how well, important is it? Well, first off, I think the most important thing that we can tell anyone that wants to get into this kind of music is that if you have a working list of tunes, you have a place to begin when it when it comes time to play with other people, which is really the only reason we do this in the first place. Like, no one learns how to play the guitar, or any instrument for that matter, to sit in their room and practice alone. Like, it's a conversational activity. It's, it's, a, it's a communal thing. And so when you can get together with someone, I mean, how many times in your life have you, got, have you been, like, hanging with someone for the first time and like when you didn't know a bunch of tunes and you spent the you spent you know the first 10 minutes figuring out like i don't know what do you want to play i don't know what do you want to play i don't know what do you want to play i don't know what do you want to play yeah and so it's so nice to be able to say like let's play a train and see and then everyone just starts playing a train yeah and then, and then it's like instantly you guys are your friends, are friends now your yeah, friends, you guys yeah. are instantly like you and me for yeah. example that's a, that's a great example like we got together and played some tunes and we're like oh man I, I love this guy and that was it yeah now look at us big time people tend to forget when we get into practicing guitar we get really obsessed with scales and arpeggios and and licks and lines and exercises and all stuff we tend to forget the reason we learned to play music was to play music play songs and and to play tunes and these tunes are the vessel for which we can use all these things we look on you know so in a lot of the videos i talk about enclosures and two five ones and all these different lines and stuff like that well what are they for if we don't know a bunch of tunes right like that that's where we use these I wouldn't even say a bunch of tunes. I would say like a handful. Like with all my pri with all my private students, I say like I say you know make a list of ten songs, and learn them inside and out. Just have ten tunes that you can play in every key that you're totally comfortable with, and that you can call. And it would, or better yet, when someone else calls, you can just play it, and 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 you guys are you guys are cool. Like there's no need to pull out a chart or to get your phone or to go to iReal or whatever. Like you, you just you know you know some tunes. Now once you've learned ten tunes, it feels a that feels like a much taller mountain. Before you do it, but then you learn ten songs, and all of a sudden learning fifty is not doesn't sound nearly as daunting as it did a second ago, and then all of a sudden a hundred's it within your reach, and then two hundred, and then five hundred, and then all of a sudden like you know you you go to you know you go to a gig or you go to a jam session or something, and you don't need a book at all. Yeah, you're just there. You know, Absolutely. That's a re and I got to tell you, that does a lot more for your self esteem and self confidence than even maybe just your like technique and your chops. Like feeling like you belong somewhere is a really good read, is a really good motivator. Yeah. Absolutely. And then on top of that, too, so <clears throat> yeah, because learning the first 10 is probably the biggest mountain to climb because then 20 is not that bad. And then 30. And because the other thing, too, is as you learn tunes, these pieces of tunes show up in a lot of other tunes. Right. You know, so, so for example, the, the A section of to Take the A Train we just played is the A, se a section to Girl from Ipanema. Right. It's the same tune. The bridge is different, but but once you know that and you start recognizing, like, oh, hey, I already know this move. You know, or any tune that has a one to a dominant two that then goes to two. How many tunes do that? Right. Tons. Um, I just off the top of my head. Burn Frame Sauce. Um, uh, uh, Trichotism by Oscar Pettiford. Um and about, a, and about a million others that I can't think of right now that, yeah. that just read one one major, two dominant, two minor, five dominant, one major. Like, yeah. The pieces of all the tunes you're going to learn were going to show up in other places because how many tunes have two fives? How many tunes have three, six, two fives? How many tunes go one to six? To You know, they all repeat these things. Or one, you know, how many tunes go from like a one up a minor third to, to another major seven? I mean, that's, that's a Green Dolphin Street, but a lot of tunes have that same motion. That's funny that you think of it as a one up to a minor, but I think of it as like the relative minor. But it's the yeah, same yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah, it's cool. the same thing. But see, when I and the reason I do that is because if you think about one, uh, one, one major, one minor, then you can think about like the 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 last eight bars of all of me, or um, or uh, I wish you love, right? So like um, my aching heart, and I agree that you have so like anytime so now whenever I hear that one major one minor I instantly think like Green Dolphin Street I wish you love uh, uh, all of me 
and a, again about a million other tunes that do that same thing. Yeah. And you're not on. You're, so now once once you get once you get enough songs into your hands, all of a sudden, it's not like, it's not like oh here's another here's a brand new song I got to learn all these changes to. It's like here's this one thing that only happens once, that's unique, and all the other stuff is like, other tunes that I already know how to play. So you're never you're never back you're never. From the, it's never harder than it is the first time. Yeah, exactly. The first time is always yeah. the hardest. And <clears throat> I've seen, like, on forums and stuff like this, you know, people, people like to argue on forums about all sorts of stuff. But I see people, t you know, talking about, you know, why do I need to learn tunes? Why can't I just read them? When you read a tune... You're tethered. Yeah, and you're reacting. You can't be deliberate. Um, when you know a tune, you know what's coming. You can set yourself up. Yeah, you can set yourself up for things. You know where you're going. You know what's coming because it's all inside of you. When you're reading, you're constantly reacting. And there's a huge difference between the two and, 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 and in your own ability to kind of make things happen in, in, the, in those moments, you know. And not, not to say that, you know, you, you know, you can't read sometimes. I mean, <clears throat> nobody knows every tune. I mean, Micah knows a lot more standards than I do. But I know a lot more bebop tunes than he does and modern tunes. Yep. You good. know, so, so when we play together... He'll call a tune, and sometimes I have to pull, you know, I have to pull up my phone and get the changes. That's okay, but ninety percent of the time, I try to go home and make a note, and then go learn that tune, you know, so so I know it. You know, I tell all my students, and that, it's a really good point. Like, like you know, when I was learning, when I was like learning all a lot of this stuff for the first time, I would go to jam sessions, and I wouldn't sit in. I would just go to the jam session, and I would like literally pen and paper. Like this is pre iPhone. Like I would like pen and paper. I would make a list of every tune that got called. And I would go home and I would shed it and I would like, I would get it under my hands and like 12 keys, like all the stuff, like make sure that like, if that, if that, if that conversation comes up again, I was ready. Mm -hmm. Or if like, you know, if you no, know, like I, I would just go hear, I'd go hear people play because like great, you know, I would, I always tell my students like great writers read. So great players listen. Yeah. So if you want to be a great player, you have to listen to everything mm -hmm. around you and go, go hear, go hear cats playing down the street from your house. Go to big shows. Watch YouTube. YouTube exists yeah, now. YouTube is YouTube. When we exists. were coming up, that wasn't a thing. Yeah, that wasn't a thing. Like, YouTube is a thing now, and like you can. I mean, there's a video. My favorite guitar player is Johnny Smith, and there's videos of Johnny Smith on YouTube playing, like, in front of you. Like, that's incredible. Like, I could only imagine what that was like when I was a kid. But like, you know, like listen to stuff, check stuff out. Like, try to like actively with actively work. Like when you're when you're like in your like you're like driving somewhere and you're listening to a tune. Think like. God, that 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 change sounds like sounds like the bridge. It sounds like the last eight of all of me, because more than likely it probably is. So you know it doesn't matter if it's F to F minor to E minor to A seven, or if it's like you know if, it, if, it's, if it starts on a C. Like the harmonic uh, the harmonic integrity of the idea is is the same. So like recognize that, and then your life gets a little bit easier, because then you can say, well, I, I was listening to that tune in the car, and that sounds like that's all of me. So I'm gonna learn that because I already know all of me. Yeah, there's been a lot of times where I'm, you know, I'm driving, li listening to a record, and I'm like, and I'll hear a bridge, and I'm like, wait, that goes to dominant three, like, because like, it sounds like rhythm change, and, like, rhythm and, change. And, yeah. and, and then I'll go home and I'll I'll find a lead sheet or I'll, you know, look at I real B or something, like, okay, I was right, you know, I heard that, and then and now that tune's easier to learn because now I have a point of reference, a point of reference to what's going yeah. on, and then something Mike I mentioned earlier that I'm a big fan of, that a lot of people don't tend to do, and it's really worth it, but it's learn tunes in all twelve keys. Now I don't do that with every tune. No, I don't. Know. I don't. I don't have. All, I don't have that much time. I, I don't expect you to either. Yeah. But when we <clears throat> learn a tune in all twelve keys, it opens up the tune more than I can ever explain. Because you're going to start to see it. Yeah. You know, every time you play the tune in a different key, you're going to play something differently than you did in the original key. And then you and then you move it around and then you move it to another key. Now you're playing something different because you're on a different part of the fretboard. You're thinking differently. And then what ends up happening is when you get back to the original key. All that new stuff you thought of the other keys is now there. It's still for you. there. Yeah. yeah, it's still there because, yeah. but you didn't think of it because of you know because no matter how much you try, the fretboard does kind of dictate what we're doing right. to a certain extent, you know. And changing the key can kind of open us up quite a bit. You open know? strings. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, playing a tune in the key of D is not a tune. You're not going to hear a lot. Of, a lot of people call tunes in the key of D on a jazz gig, but like when you do, when you when you play a tune in the key of D, you have open strings now, and that is like that's a game changer for what's available to you. And so just yeah, twelve keys, and I don't do it enough either. No one does, by the way. Yeah. So you're 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 in good company. Yeah, 
I've met a lot of people that view it as like, oh, that's just purely an academic exercise. You know, that, 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 that that's like just like lifting weights for guitar. But it's like go really, play with a singer. Yeah, but it, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, all the times uh, we play with a singer, they're gonna call you know something like summertime in the key of A flat. Yeah. A flat. All all the things you are in C. Yeah. You oh know, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. 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 Or, or like the, my least favorite transpose is Stella. Round midnight. Oh my, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, like it goes on and on. Like I was, I was, I was on a gig on Saturday, and someone called around midnight and 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 in D flat. D no, flat. In, in, yeah, in D flat in, in B flat minor. Yeah, go ahead. I'll no, wait. no, no, yeah, I'll yeah, wait. I got, yeah. I got nothing yeah. for you. Yeah. I want to play it in E. Yeah, like, that's that's it. That's it. exactly. Yeah, that's it. Or like, E flat, you know. But yeah, D flat. Yeah, it's yeah, that's, that's E flat minor. Yeah. You know, but the the benefits far outweigh you know. The negatives. There's no negatives. It's just there's none. There's none. Yeah. And and the other thing too is you know learning another tune in another key. Again, it starts to open up when you learn other tunes. You're like, oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah, this because is the thing that happened because I learned. Because, it the, uh, yeah. Yeah. What I noticed is when I started learning tunes in all twelve keys, that my ear got better and I started recognizing yeah. and feeling you know these different progressions. Yeah. The cycle because that's what Bruce Forman always talks about. Everything is the cycle, and he's right. Everything. In, in this music is the cycle. And even if it's not jazz, when you're playing other things, you know, I always tell students, you know, because, um, you know, most of my students don't play jazz or anything like that. You know, they play like rock or country and stuff. I, I still tell them, you know, okay, if you're work, working on, you know, Brian a Girl, learn it in all 12 keys. Because at the end of the day, you're going to have a one, four, five in 12 keys. Yeah, exactly. And you, all these things are going to open for you in different ways and you're going to see the fretboard differently and you're going to just supercharge your playing. Right. True, and if not, let's but let's 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 even go further because I'm sure in, like whoever's watching this is thinking like twelve keys, my God, like it's hard enough to learn Stella once, but like let's let's take let's take it back let's take it back one. What if we just thought about all the changes as Roman numerals instead of keys? So instead of thinking like instead of thinking okay, so let let me God forbid let's take Stella as an example. So like we're in the key of B flat, so it starts in the sharp four, right? So. Now, what if you were in the key of G, right? Sharp four, right? And so if you think of it that way, then you, you have a little bit more of, of at least a leg up when it comes to trying to figure this stuff out in real time. Because, you know, inevitably you'll be in a gig and they'll probably be with a singer and they'll call it, they'll call Stella in F and you're like, do what now? And so you've got to start working and having some point of reference when it comes to what those, what, what the, what the, the Roman, at least the, the, the Roman numerals of, of like the heart of the whole of the changes, at least that will give you a an incredible leg up to figure that out. No, absolutely, like I always think it's important to think of it as the Roman numerals and think of it as a function to relate to what you're doing because then it makes the transposition easier. And at first that might be tough, you know. I think you have to figure out, you know, it, 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 say you're taking a college theory course. Okay, that's a two and a, you know, but. And I tend to even not even overthink it, you know. For me, I think okay, this is a minor two five. The first two chords of Stella is a minor two five. Going where? Uh, we're not worried about that. Yeah, let's just get to the first <laughs> two. Yeah. And you know, but it's a minor two five. And so you know, if you think okay, it starts up a tritone from from home. Okay, now I have minor two five. And but then I go two yeah. five, and then I go yeah, relative minor, relative minor. Yeah. And it resolves. You know, and you know, even to, so let's talk about a simple tune. You know, think okay, um, say it all. Okay, just set it off. We have we have two five, three six, three six, and we have, we have another two five. But it's not the two five we're going to. It's two five to the five. five. To the five. And then we have a two five. Just nonsense five, two five. five. Yeah. And then which just, is really like a try, which is like a, a, a tritone tri 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 sub, but, but it is a nonsense. We, we, we can say that. We can yeah. say it's a nonsense. But like in my head, that's how it works. It's like I'm thinking. <clears throat> okay, so I have a two five, and I know I'm in C. And then they have three yeah. six, but, I, but this, this, is, this is still two five. It's just three six now. But to me, I think okay. Now what that five was, or the six, or, or the the six, now becomes two, and then we don't have step. Yep. And, and so yeah. and so whatever key, cold they're, key. Their function, yeah. So uh, F. Okay, F. It's just 
just a cycle and it gets to be easier and easier to understand the more you do this. And yeah, so standards give you the, the, the vessel for all of this to make it happen without, and, and this is why this is so important, you know, learning lines and learning scales and arpeggios is, is obviously super important, but this is the vessel in which we use these things. And that's even more important. And, and when you learn to tune all 12 keys, okay, well now it's time to take out your two fives and all the lines and then now make them work in all those different keys and all that stuff. And now you're really learning stuff and you're really owning things. That's true. Yeah. That's true. The thing that I tell people all the time, like when, when, like when I have students that talk about this kind of stuff is that, you know, the, like the one thing that people who are like the real, like the real killing pros, pro pros, they're confident. They know the material. They don't, they don't they they have a hundred percent confidence in what the tune is where it was and where it's going and they net they never deviate and, and they, they, ne they never they they're never not sure of it and the way that the way that you achieve that level of confidence is by working you know like yeah. learn, learn if you learn a song in 12 keys you, you know that song there's no doubt about it like there's no there's nothing getting past you now and it's it's good advice. We should all probably take it actually. Yeah. And uh, w one more thing to kind of touch on. We'll we'll probably touch on this more in future episodes. But <clears throat> how do you learn the tune? How do you learn the changes? What are the right changes? People talk about right changes, wrong changes, and there's really no wrong changes. That, like the changes are whatever people are playing at the time. Mm -hmm. But you need to know what changes people can play because the real book isn't always correct in that real. sense. You know, exactly. So it's like, those are changes for the tune. And some people are going to play them. People learn out of the real book. But if you're playing with some older guys or s some guys that just learned off the records, yeah, they might be that. playing some different changes, you know? And so you have to kind of know all of that, you know? And, and so I think it's really important whenever you choose, learn a tune. And I always find this with my students, you know, they'll learn a tune. I'm like, okay, so did you listen to it? No. Right. <laughs> you know, so... First off, listen to whatever tune you're going to learn. Listen to a lot of versions. And then when you start learning the changes, check your changes with the changes on the records that you're hearing. So most of the time, they'll be pretty, they'll, they'll be fine. But you, you might find a measure or two that's like, oh, well, here they're doing this. And here they're doing this. You know, and learn that. You know, do your best to learn that. I find more discrepancies. Um, well, the changes are, the, the changes can be a little squirrely too. But like, I find a lot of discrepancies. Like we were just talking about this. We were playing Donnelly uh, uh, earlier today. Mm -hmm. Like everyone plays that, everyone plays those tunes a little differently, and I think it's because Parker played the tune a little differently every time. Absolutely, so it's yeah. not it's not necessarily anyone's fault. It just it's the nature of, it's the nature of, of of the way that these things are shared and these things are passed on. And so, like you know, there's always going to be a couple of things here and there that that maybe don't jive. That's why the other thing that's impossible to not talk about is listening. Like you have you have to be so hyper aware of what's going on around you. Because if you're playing with a piano player who, you know, is, is playing a, a chord that you don't always go to, you want to be there for that. Yeah. You know, you want to be, you want to be, you want to be aware of that moment so you can try to catch it. And if you're just so busy thinking about like this thing you've been trying to, that you've been shedding all week and trying to nail it at the right time, you know, you're probably, you know, maybe, maybe, or maybe you're just like, like attached. Maybe you're just glued to the chart because you don't know the tune as well as you probably would like to like. All those things are going to get in the way of you playing music that is just an extension of who you are at that moment. And that's what this is all about. Yeah, and we're all guilty of that, you know, oh, of yeah. being too attached to the tune or the, the way we're trying to play it. Well, we can't know every tune. Like, yeah. I mean, like, it's like, I, you know, we know a lot of tunes and we don't know, but I don't, I don't think we're scratching the surface. No, not even close. You know? you know, and when you learn in all 12 keys and you really learn it organically, it becomes more of a living, breathing thing than, right. than, than re regurgitating. Right. Stuff you learn. Here's this lick I got from Herb Ellis. Here's this lick I got from Barney Kessel. I'm, I've been working on trying to plug, plug this thing in right here at the right time. And you get so caught up in trying to play it at the right moment that you, the moment goes past you and you're still you're still getting ready for it. And then you got to wait a whole other 32 just to yeah. get back to it. So and, and then, you know, and then when you know it really well, then... then it just comes out, it just falls out of your way. And superimposing changes if, yeah. if you want to do that. Or hearing what turnaround, you know, maybe the bass player's playing a different turnaround than you, you know? But it becomes more organic and more and more of a yeah, living it, thing, you know. The conversation, you know it, you know. Because I, I, I'm good. I pray over, you know, end it to, to end a form. You know, I, I like doing that a lot. But you know, 
there's other changes that people, you know, mm-hmm. you know, what's the, what's the real common? You know, going going to like what are you in B flat? Yeah. So like yeah, I I do the, the, this one. Yeah. The, like the sharp four ending. Like I yeah. I do it way more than I probably should. Yeah, and, and there's and every player that you're gonna play with has their way more than they should yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. You, you want to be there for that, you yeah. know? They're all yeah, we're all guilty of it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Or that one. Or, uh... Yep. And, then, and, and the sharp 11. Yeah. George Benson ended. Yep. 